Hey folks, how's it going? Today we have something really fun to go into. Just last night, Derivative dropped the latest experimental build, which if you've been following behind the scenes a little bit, is a huge, huge, huge update in a lot of ways. So we thought it would be fun today to show you some of the most exciting features so you could dive in and start experimenting a little bit ahead of time, or at least start thinking about how you might be using these features in the future. So this new build is the 2021.38110 build. If you check the release notes, we can see that it has a lot of stuff going on. And I would consider this probably one of the biggest updates to Touch Designer that's probably happened in the last few years. And it's definitely going to be one of the most important ones I think that we'll be thinking about in a couple years to come. So let me dive into Touch Designer here. And First of all, everything kind of looks the same as before, which is a good thing because the whole backend has been migrated from OpenGL over to Vulkan. If you haven't been following what Vulkan is, Vulkan is the next generation of graphics APIs that developers are going to use to make games, you know, game engines, editors, any kind of graphical application is now really going to start using this Vulkan API. Now this Vulkan API gives developers a lot more lower level access to all their hardware so that they can integrate directly with things like GPU features across different platforms. And one of the best parts about Vulkan is that it's being made in a way that's going to make all of the code so much more portable. So one of the big hopes for this is A, a lot of the Mac OS features that aren't available previously because of OpenGL limitations are going to start to roll out and we're going to see a lot more parity between the Mac version of Touch Designer and the Windows version of Touch Designer. Another secret hope for a lot of developers out there is that hopefully this means that the jump from Mac OS to a Linux version of Touch Designer could be in the future. So that's a very exciting thing to start thinking about. Now one of the other things that you're going to start to notice if you're playing around with this experimental version of Touch Designer is you might find the operator cook times are starting to get a little bit lower. And not just a little bit, but for a lot of tops, there's going to be a lot less CPU overhead and a lot less GPU cook times just because Vulkan is able to get directly to that hardware a lot faster than OpenGL used to be able to. So that's already something that you're not going to notice directly, but you're going to feel because all your projects will probably get a little bit better frame rate than they used to. Now, aside from that, there's actually a lot of really great features that you will notice on the day to day. One of them is that if you're using a high DPI screen or using a 4K screen or, you know, you've got a newer laptop like a Razer or something like that, and it's got a really high resolution screen, you've probably found it a little bit tricky to work inside a touch designer because all the text was either too small or too big. And there was never really any native support for high DPI rendering inside a touch designer. Now with this move up to Vulkan and some of the new features that have been put into the text rendering side of things behind the scenes, you should have a much, much, much better experience working on high DPI screens with this build and going forward. Now there are two features and I say operators, but one of them is an operator and one of them is just an amazing new tool that we have that I think are going to change the game for a lot of developers. One of them is the Audio VST chop. I can't believe I'm even saying it. Audio VSTs inside of Touch Designer. I know it's crazy to think about. But the new Audio VST chop allows you to load VSTs directly into Touch Designer, whether they're instruments, effects, really anything you want. And you have a great way to pass data into it, control its parameters, send and receive MIDI events from that plugin. So we can see here, I've just gone in and dropped an Audio VST chop in here. And don't worry, we're going to do much more deep dives on how all these operators work, but it's just fun to look around and see all these new things and get excited about them. So this audio VST chop, what I can do is go over to my file parameter, find one of my VSTs here. And one thing to note is that this implementation only supports VST threes. So if you've been using VST twos for a while and still hanging on those, you should go back to the plugin manufacturers and download the VST three version of your plugins. In this case, I have this TDR Nova equalizer, which is a great free equalizer that you can grab. And lo and behold, I can show the plugin UI and I have this beautiful equalizer directly able to be used inside of Touch Designer. I think this is going to change the game in a lot of ways between how sound can be processed. You know, a lot of the tools that we had were 
usable but often difficult to use, especially if you tried using the built-in compressors or EQs or filters inside a touch designer. They work, but they don't often have a lot of the character that a lot of audio developers, producers, and artists are used to with their plugins. As well, they can be a little bit tricky to control, so this is really gonna help folks create beautiful audio projects, as well as bring in synths. You know, I'm a big fan of, of Zebra 2. You know, I'll be throwing Zebra 2 inside of some Touch Designer projects and making those generative audio soundscapes natively right inside a Touch Designer. And this should be really cool because then it, it gives you more options on whether you actually need Ableton running in the background or not. You know, before it was more of a necessity that you're going to do your audio in something like Ableton and you'll do all the visuals in something like Touch Designer. But depending on the project, you may be able to get away with just doing the full audio and video components, both generative and you know, non-generative stuff right inside a touch designer. So that's a really, really, really cool new operator that I'm excited about. And actually, I would be lying if I didn't say the most exciting thing for me are comments. Now, if you've wished all of these years that you had comments inside a touch designer like we do in Max MSP and some other development environments, now we do. So what we can do is go ahead and right click on the background and we're gonna see a bunch of new add boxes up here. We got add comment, network box, and add annotate. Now comment is kind of the simplest and most basic version of this. And one of the really cool things we can do with this is click and drag it over a set of operators. And you can see, I, you know, it's bringing tears to my eyes a little bit. This is a full on, full on comment box inside of Touch Designer. It sits in the background beautifully, just like any comment box would. And one of the really cool things we can do is if we right click on the background of this comment and enclose the operators, whenever we go to essentially move our comment box, we are gonna take that group of operators with us. So this is gonna give developers and artists a lot of different ways to clarify their networks, build cleaner projects, now we can have a nice mix of areas of the projects where you're using kind of containers or base comps to layer that functionality on a kind of depth level. But also even if you're working on some projects that end up having a big flat structure, it can be a lot easier for you to kind of clean things, group things together, and be able to move and resize them as required. Now this comment box is pretty simple by default. You can think about it as like the most basic version of the comments. And one of the really fun things that we can do is use something called an annotate box. Now the really fun thing about this one is the hotkey is already built in. So all you have to do is hit alt and while you're holding alt, click and drag and you're gonna get this annotate box. Now this annotate box is kind of like a comment box plus in that it allows you to do things like have a separate header that is separate, ooh, separate from your comment. As well, it's got a lot of styling features. So you can style the header sizes, the body text sizes. You can go and change things like the color of the background. So let's say you want this one to be red. And there are even more compelling features like being able to natively embed op viewers inside of this annotate comp. And the cool thing about this is it's not just a comp that is used inside of the network but eventually there's probably gonna be some ways where you can bring these elements over into a user interface if you like. But I think most people are probably gonna be using this inside of their network, especially this enclosed operator thing is so much fun, being able to just have everything inside of my comment box, easy to click and drag and move around, easy to see. I think, you know, almost finished are the days of having text that's sprinkled everywhere with the word wrap on, just so that you can leave yourself some comments this is really gonna change the game. So if you haven't seen this new experimental build, head over to derivative.ca, check out the get it now section. If you scroll down all the way to the bottom, there's the experimental downloads and 2021.38,110 is what you wanna get. And I highly recommend looking at the release notes. We'll be talking more about all these new features, but especially since this is an experimental and a very big experimental, I should tell you, a, don't do production projects in this. This is very, very, very new. And you can even see here, lots of things are still broken because that migration from OpenGL to Vulkan is a very large migration. So A, don't use this on production projects. 
B, I would even be careful opening your existing production projects in it. Make sure you make a copy of them and a backup of them just in case something happens because you won't be able to roll those projects back after you open them and save them in this experimental version. But have fun looking through this. There is a lot of cool stuff, not just the stuff we talked about today, but lots of video extensions, new ways of working with parameters from Python, totally new operators for rendering text in different ways. So there are a lot of great things in here. And I hope this gets you excited for this new experimental build. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.